So now we're having a look at the inherent random variant variation. Inherent random variation is the difference between the value of each outcome and the average for that group. So if we have a look at our previous example that we used for one factor analysis of variance, we can see that we had this set of values here and we can find the mean of each group if we want to use our graphical calculator to do so. And I can delete everything that's in the second column as well. So for this first set of values, which is 16, 15, 13, 21 and 15, we need to check that our set says list one, one, because we only have a list of values. We don't have any frequencies. We can see that the mean is 16 and that's what it says here. So for list one, the mean is 16. And similarly for brand two, it's 20. And for brand three, the mean is 27. So if we're then having a look at the uh, inherent variance, so we're looking at the difference between the value from the table and the mean value. So 16, my 16 minus 16 gives us zero. 15 minus 16 gives us minus 1 and so on to get these values. So if we have a look at a full new example of this so we can see how it works. So here it doesn't matter that we've got different sized groups, we can still do the same thing. So here we've got uh, investigating the cleaning action of four different detergents and we have 20 pieces of clothes. Um, the clothes were split into groups of five, each of which was treated with four detergents, but unfortunately three pieces of clothes were lost in the experiment. So that's where these values disappeared to. So we're trying to have a look at how different these values are from our actual mean values for each group. So the easiest way to do this is find the totals for each of the groups because that can be a very good starting point. So if we wanted to, we could find the totals for each group. So for our first group, we have 77, 81, 61, 76 and 69 which gives us 300, sorry, 364. For our second group, we have 74, 66 and 58, which gives us 198 as our total for the second uh, detergent. For the third detergent, we have 73 plus 78 plus 57, plus 69 plus 63 which gives us 340 and for our last group we have 76 plus 85 plus 77 plus 64 which gives us 300 and 2. Now, if all of our groups were the same size, we could already tell a little bit of something about the difference between the groups. But because some of these are larger groups than others, we're going to have to find the means. So for the first group, we had five pieces of data. For the second group, we only have three. For the third, we're back up to five. And for the fourth group, we have four. So we're having to find the means. So 364 divided by five gives us our first mean, our mu1 of 72.8. Our second mean, 198 divided by three, which gives us mu2 as being 66. For the third mean, we've got 340 divided by five, which gives us 68. And for the last group, we've got 302 divided by 4, which gives us 75.5.
Now, if we were being asked a question about the contributions that each one made, or if we thought that any of these were actually really different to the others, then we could have a look at these and we could make a comment about uh, the second detergent, detergent B, being the least effective, and the fourth detergent, detergent B, D, being the most effective. So we can see the differences here. Now, what we're actually trying to find is the inherent random vari variation of each piece of data. So we're going to have to make a quick table so that we can find all of our differences. Okay, so we've got group A, detergent B, detergent C and detergent D. And just as we did up here, we're going to do the mean, the value in the table minus each of the means. So we're going to do 77 minus 72.8. which gives us 4.2 minus 72.8 which gives us 8.2 minus 72.8 which gives us minus 11 Point eight seventy six minus seventy two point eight, which gives us three point two, and lastly sixty nine minus seventy two point eight, which gives us minus three point eight. And something that's quite nice about this is that you should start to notice that each group should average out in its inherent random variation to give us zero. So here we've got uh, eight, zero and minus eight for group C. We've got five, 10, Minus 11, 1, and minus 5. And again, you can see that those average out to give us 0. And for the last group, we'd have 0.5, 1, One point five and lastly sixty four minus seventy five point five, which gives us minus eleven point five, and again that averages out to give us zero. So we can have a look at these to see the variation between the groups. So we can see that this one's going between minus 11.8 and 8.2. This one's going between 8 and minus 8. This one between minus 11 and 10. And this one between minus 11.5 and 9.5. So there isn't a great deal of difference between the spread of the data. Maybe you could say that B is more consistent because that only goes between 8 and minus 8. Whereas the other ones usually get up into the 10s for one of the groups at least. The last thing that someone could ask you to have a look at to do with this would be the alphas. So the alphas, so alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 and alpha 4 these are the difference between the overall mean and the mean for each one of the groups. 
So if we have a look back here, if we're trying to find the mean of all of these numbers, so we know all the totals for each one of the groups, so 600 and 364, sorry, 198, 340, and 302. And if we divide that by the total number of pieces of data that we have here, which is 17, we end up with, if I keep it as a fraction, we end up with our overall mean being 1204 divided by 17 just because it ends up being a decimal otherwise. So then for the alphas we're going to do the mean from the group minus the overall mean so 1204 divided by 17 which gives us 1.98 rounded to three significant figures 66 minus our 1204 divided by 17 which gives us minus 4.82 sorry I've had to squeeze that in there a little bit 68 minus 1204 over 17 which gives us minus 2.82 and lastly we'll have 75.5 minus 1204 divided by 17 which gives us 4.68 rounded to three significant figures now usually what you would find is that these also cancel out to give you zero but unfortunately for this one we have had to do a bit, little bit of rounding so uh, it won't work out as well. Just going to move this a little bit so it's a bit easier to see. Sorry it's not taking my equal sign with it. And just move this one over a little bit, there we go. So here we have the variation of each of our individual means from our overall mean. And again, they are varying between minus 4.82 and 4.68. So that's not a great variation in the means, considering the values that we were dealing with. So as I said before, when we we're having a look at the means here. Uh, there isn't much of a difference between them. So if we were to do a hypothesis test on this data now, I would probably be expecting that we would accept H0, that we would conclude that there wasn't any great big difference between them. Now this comes up quite a lot. If I go back. Sorry, I've gone to the wrong page. If we have a quick peek at what comes up in the two-factor analysis of variance, sorry, it's gone ahead too far now. There we go. Uh, we can see sorry, it's in the Latin square bit. Sorry about that. There we go. So we can see that the these come up again and we're talking about the effect of things happening in the i level, the j level and when we get on to having a look at Latin square we can see it happening in three levels and the mean of each group should be the same as the mean of the overall group plus the contribution from that level and then plus the uh, inherent random variation for the one factor analysis of variance. So if you have a quick look in your formula booklet, if you have a look on page seven, you can see it says one factor analysis of variance where xij, which is the actual factor, is equal to the mean. So if I write down what it says in the formula booklet, it says xij equals the mean plus alpha i plus the inherent random variation 
E I J. So that means that each number can be worked backwards from having the overall mean plus our inherent random variation plus our value that we have here. Now, again, remember that this won't be exact for this set of data here because we've rounded for these values down here. But if we hadn't rounded, then we would end up exactly back with our original set of data. As I said, usually these questions now are mainly looking at you to find the means of these groups and then make some sort of a comment. So if one of these means was vastly different from the other three, then that would mean that that one was different somehow. So either that brand wasn't as good or it didn't work as well, or maybe the test went wrong. There's lots of different things to come from that, but that would lead us to think that if we were to perform the hypothesis test, that we would reject H naught. Thank you very much for listening.